everybody, welcome back to my channel. So I don't know if you noticed, but recently I have not been posting as much. I have been posting probably once a week. I swear I even went two weeks without posting, which is not like me because I do really enjoy making YouTube videos. This is my hobby. This is what I've been doing since I was 14 years old. It is, it is a hobby. Yeah, I've just decided to film one video a week because it means I can put more effort into the videos and I can really kind of think about it. And there will just be better videos in general. So I will be posting, hopefully, fingers crossed, on Mondays at 5 p.m. So that is my kind of plan and my schedule, but knowing me, it will change whatever but yeah i have been busy and one of the things i've been busy doing is learning to drive i did recently do my driving test and i passed it so that is why i'm here making this video so this video is going to be me showing you well not showing you but explaining how i managed to pass my driving test with zero lessons from a instructor first things first oh god i nearly spelt that first things first you're gonna need a cup of tea or a coffee because this video is most probably going to be long and that is because i have made some notes i always make notes for videos on my laptop just so that I have a structure. But today I made a lot of notes because I do not wanna miss a single thing. I wanna make sure that I am saying absolutely everything to help you and just to make sure that I get like my reasoning across as to how I was able to do this because it could help people save a lot of money. I haven't actually spent a single penny on driving lessons and some people spend, you know, almost up to a thousand pounds which is a lot of money but at least hundreds of pounds for me it was big saving and it was a no-brainer for me to do this but a quick disclaimer before i do start is that obviously i did have access to a car so whether that was like you, you do need access to the car it was my parents car and you know whether it's a friends a family members you do need to have access to be able to regularly use somebody's car and also that obviously comes along with the fact that you need somebody to be in the car with you when you're driving now they will also <laughs> have to be the person to kind of teach you a little bit about driving but they don't have to teach you that much because the internet is amazing and i will talk about that in a minute now i just thought to say that i didn't pass first time and that is not before you click off that is not because i didn't have any lessons they were situational things the first time i failed was because of this lorry I just couldn't remember then sorry um this lorry pulled in front of me and I was like too slow to respond I think instructors kind of have to be on edge anyway and she did grab the wheel my examiner did sorry obviously that's an instant fail and I knew that at the time and in that driving test I actually had zero minors so I got zero minors but one major so that was really irritating, but that confirmed to me that I don't need lessons because if I was able to get zero minors, then I was happy. Then my second driving test that I did, I was speeding basically. I was doing 34 in a 30 zone because I thought it was 40. I swear the sat now said it was 40, but I don't know. I wish I could go back in time and check, but yeah, I, I was speeding in that area. I didn't know the roads too well so that is something that I think if I was to learn again I would recommend to kind of familiarize myself with the area around the test center a little bit more because every single test I did I was driving on new turf like I was driving on roads I've never driven on before which actually makes it so much harder so um I would recommend to make sure you're familiar with the surroundings but yeah second um second time i did get four minors and one major and then my third test where i actually passed and that was on the 4th of march i got four minors and obviously that was it because i passed so one thing is first you need to make sure that you have your provisional driving license so if you haven't already got that sorted you need to go and get that sorted so that you're able to learn in someone else's car and it's also a great form of id because you probably have to use your passport if you don't have your driving license also before you can sort of pass your test you have to do your theory test so make sure to be revising for that and practicing for that because that is obviously the first thing that you have to do you, you know you can still learn to drive without doing your theory test but you can't pass your test without doing your theory test so um i would recommend to use apps for that i had this amazing app um which i can't remember what it was called but it was like you know so many questions 
that were very similar to what you would get in your theory test and it was just a great app i didn't have to pay for it so it was free um oh no maybe i did pay for it i think i paid 1.99 or something like that but it was great and yeah the questions were so similar to what i got in my actual theory test that yeah it was great so i am going to talk about how you should kind of get yourself ready to pass your test and to learn to drive without needing a driving instructor and most people will tell you you need to drive an instructor and they will tell you that for many reasons mainly because it's an easy response to give for example if you're asking for help about a question or something instead of them giving you the answer to that question they're probably going to say you know you should probably get an instructor which is the answer that i received from many people there will also be that potential not with everyone um but potential element of jealousy where some people might be a bit jealous that you are going to save a lot of money not doing lessons and they may think you know oh you'll never pass your test or they'll just be negative about the whole thing instead of thinking positively and thinking do you know what well done you you know you're going to put a lot of effort in a lot of work in um by yourself without needing an instructor they will probably say to you you know you're probably not going to know this 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 and this because the instructor will tell you it no you can find all of this information online everybody so I'm here to tell you that um also people might tell you that you need an instructor so that they can tell you how to pass your test so information about your driving test this is all online everything is online google the internet is amazing if you do your research and you do it well and you have access to a car and somebody can be in the car with you then you can pass your test you need access to a car that you can learn in as i've said but it has to meet the requirements for a driving test now i may put the requirements on the screen for what is needed for a driving test like for your car but if there's any warning lights on the car or anything like that that is a no-go zone like you can't have red warning lights on your car when you're doing your driving test so just make sure that it does meet the requirements check with your insurance company that kind of thing you also need to have number two someone to help you for example a parent or guardian or a friend that has been driving for three years or more that's able to sit in the car whilst you're driving and to actually teach you how to drive in the first place so what i'd recommend is if you really don't know how to drive and you've never driven before is to actually go to a very secluded area that is away from any kind of traffic whatsoever me and my dad and my brother first learned to drive or not my dad sorry my dad taught me and my brother first to drive in this really like almost near a car park and there was actually a mini roundabout as well and there was literally no cars there so it was very helpful to have that there but just a secluded area where you can learn to just set off so this is where you will learn the basics and the person in the car with you has to be able to teach you how to set off how to change gear don't really necessarily need to worry about checking mirrors at this point obviously you know check enough so that you're not going to crash but don't you know you don't at this point have to think right now i need to check this 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 like you do in your test but just focus on kind of setting off in a safe way and just practicing setting off going down the road and just being comfortable and confident with that now this may take days to get used to you may get used to it straight away it may take weeks everybody is different when it comes to driving as time goes along you sort of need to practice going up the gears a little bit more because that means obviously you're going to get a bit faster with the car and just make sure you're getting a lot of gear change practice in so when you're going round a corner or something and you're just going to go down the gears and up the gears this is for a manual car by the way if you're driving in an automatic forget that but yeah just make sure that you are getting comfortable with the car and you kind of take yourself away from that secluded area but still to a quiet area but where there's a little bit of traffic and just make sure that you are obviously safe <laughs> um you don't want to be putting yourself in a position where you've forgotten where the brake is that kind of thing but you know just kind of build your confidence up very slowly very gradually this is not a process and this is not something to rush doing oh my god I got pins and needles, everybody. Sorry, guys. So another important thing is to try small roundabouts to kind of get yourself going. Because in my driving test, there was hundreds, well, not hundreds, but there was tons of roundabouts where I did my driving test. And yeah, <laughs> basically, you're going to have to get really comfortable with them. And with big roundabouts where it's very busy and there's a lot of cars and there's different lanes. So just start off with small roundabouts where you can get used to kind of 
how it works, you know, how the lanes work, which lane you need to be in to go which way, etc. And obviously, you know, I'm not going to tell you this information. The person next to you in your car is going to have to tell you this. So you're going to have to trust somebody and you're going to have to make sure that they know what they're talking about as well, because they could be feeding you information that's incorrect. So you might want to also make sure you're checking this up on Google. Obviously, once this has happened, you then want to go on to kind of slightly busier roads where there's a lot more going on where you have to also think about hazards as well it's at this point it's not just about oh I can drive it's about you need to be ready for things to happen so if for example somebody does pull in front of you will you be able to stop like that or if there is something happening further on will you see that you know in time that kind of thing so you need to be comfortable with that and be you know confident on the road effectively at this point you definitely want to be checking your mirrors you definitely want to be you know looking in the mall to make sure that it is safe make sure that you are constantly checking your mirrors because that is really important if you do have any questions that your parents cannot answer or whoever you're with cannot answer then ask google search it on the internet it has thousands of things that you can ask it you know you don't need a driving instructor to ask something basic effectively the internet knows more than your driving instructor most probably just saying also i would recommend to drive everywhere possible so if your family are going out for a meal drive drive them there get that practice in if you're going to school drive to school and drive home now this means that you have to have that car readily available for use so it can't really be your best friend's car because they're going to want to use it themselves they're not going to want to have to take you to school every single day so it is kind of important to have a car that is basically your parents or a family members that you can use you know quite a lot so what i'm saying is just drive as much as possible in different areas practice different things you don't want to be in the same roads the same areas because you want to experience different roundabouts different roads and conditions etc and also don't be afraid to drive when it's snowing when it's raining you want to have that practice in you you want to have practice driving when it's snowing you just have to be aware of the conditions and make sure you're driving safely also something to remember is to indicate don't forget indicating so once you feel confident and comfortable with the car and you feel like yeah i have absolutely you know mastered gear changing and you understand the car then you want to consider and think about maneuvers so maneuvers are things like parallel parking, reverse bay parking, forward bay parking, pulling up on the right and reversing back two car spaces. These are all things that you could be told to do on your driving test. Now, when it comes to maneuvers, this is when people would tell me, would, you know, people would tell me to go and get an instructor when I would ask for help from people um, about certain things. Because again, like I said, that's the easy answer to give. But I knew I didn't want an instructor. So I went on Google. Now, there is a lot of information on Google. There is written words like step by step on how to perform each maneuver when to check your mirrors when to indicate i don't know when to turn your wheel when to line the car up with um the space so that you get in perfectly first time and just everything and then there's also videos on youtube there's thousands of videos on youtube just watch them and it visualize like it visually shows you what you need to do and it is amazing like youtube is fantastic for things like that and that's what really helped me to pass my test was youtube so for me for example um after kind of researching how to do these maneuvers i then had to sort of tailor it to my car so my car's a different size to the car that was in the test so would yours be so when the person in the test is saying line up the first line of the space with your i don't know your shoulder that maybe don't work for you it maybe won't so it's a bit of trial and error you have to keep practicing and practicing and practicing so you have to have somebody in the car with you they can be completely silent my mum did not say a single word she did not help me with maneuvers whatsoever um or my dad i taught myself maneuvers from what i found on the internet and i was doing trial and error practice 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 until i got it right so what i do is when i'm doing a forward bay park which are actually which I got asked to do twice in my driving tests. Um, I got asked in my first and second driving test to do a forward bay park, um, which is the easiest one in my opinion. I basically lined up the first line of the space in line with the grab handle on the side of my car. 
Um, so here's the space I want to go into. The first line of that space, I had it lined up perfectly with the grab handle on the right side of my car. I would then put my car on full lock and then I would go into the space and it would go in perfectly every single time. You just have to kind of do trial and error to get to that point. Obviously, you have to check your mirrors, you have to check this one, this one, this one, over your shoulder, over that shoulder, that kind of thing, like that has to happen. But that information is given on um, YouTube and on, you know, on the internet in general. I'm not gonna tell you how to do the maneuvers, I'm just gonna tell you what you need to search for. On my third test, which is the one I passed, I got given a reverse bay park, which I was more than happy to do. And I did it really well. I was actually quite proud of myself. I did it good. You will always be asked to do something in your test that involves reversing at some point, um, just to make sure that you check your mirrors and that you're doing it safely and that you can do it slowly. The one that I was kind of hoping I wouldn't get is probably parallel parking because I wasn't like amazingly good at parallel parking. Um, but I wasn't bad, I just wasn't like, 100% confident with it like I was with bay parking. Um, for reversing, what I would do is I would line up the grab handle on the right side, no, on the left side of my car, the grab handle on that door, I would line that up with the line that is two lines away from the space I want to get into. So here's my space, and then there'll be one line and then another line, and with that line, I will line it up with the grab handle and full lock on my car and then it will pretty much go into the space um, with maybe a tiny bit of adjusting, but you know, it was fine. So that's what I personally do with my car. I just practice maneuvers and bay parking, especially in a car park like Tesco's or Morrison's. There's loads of spaces in there. If you do it at night, it's nice and quiet. So that's a great place to practice. Like I said, trial and error. You won't learn it in one night. You might, but you probably won't. You might have to keep going back and back and back, but eventually you'll get it. The first time I practiced maneuvers with my mom, I was just stressed out because um, she, well, she wasn't helping me because I was just, like doing it from what I've learned online but it was just stressful because I was like why is it not doing what it says online but it's because your car is different and you've got to keep practicing until it's perfect like I said in the videos that you watch on YouTube or on the internet it does tell you when you need to look in your mirrors in a maneuver when you need to put your handbrake on and just how to do everything to be able to pass your test the government website has actually information on everything that's going to happen in your test so look at that because it will also tell you potential um maneuvers that you will have to do which is forward bay parking reverse bay parking parallel parking or pulling up on the right and reversing back two car spaces um i think i got all of them um reversing around the corner has been scrapped and three point turns has been scrapped as well so you don't have to worry about that you have to make sure your eyesight is good enough for the test my eyesight, funnily enough, wasn't good enough for the test and I knew this in advance. So I went to Specsavers, I had a quick eye test, I got my glasses and with my glasses on, I can see perfectly. I only wear my glasses for driving because my eyesight isn't that bad, but it's still not, not like amazingly great. So when I'm driving, I will wear my glasses because it's just safer. You need to be able to see a number plate from 20 meters away. And if it's a bit blurry, just go to Specsavers. My glasses only cost me 19 pounds, which to actually be able to see is, is not that much money. Also make sure you practice using a sat nav before your test because there's a one, no, there's a four in five chance that you will be asked to follow a sat nav in your test, which is funny because two out of three of my tests, I had to not follow a sat nav and I had to follow signs. But do practice using a sat nav because obviously you have to be able to look at a screen telling you where to go at the same time as looking on the road. So that's just something to think about. Also practice pulling up on the left. So you're on the left side of the road obviously. And I was asked in my first test twice to pull up on the left and in my second test. But in my third driving test, I was asked about six times to pull up on the left. Not entirely sure. I feel like that guy was trying to fail me because he did take me like a long way and he gave me an incredibly hard hill start to do, like really hard, um, but I was fine with it. But still, um, it was a struggle, um, but 
but still it was i just had the feeling like he just wanted me to fail i don't know but anyway i passed in the end but yeah pulling up on the left you need to be able to know and show that you're checking your mirrors that you're indicating that you come to a safe stop that you don't go on the curb you also need to make sure that when you do then set off again you're checking over your shoulders i got a minor in my um, third test for not checking over the shoulder i don't know how i forgot that because i knew that but anyway in your test you're under pressure also you need to revise all the show me tell me questions i thought you needed an instructor for this but you don't it is a list on the government website i will link it in the description to all of the 2022 show me tell me questions so basically in your test you'll get asked one show me question where you have to show the instructor something in the car like how to do something and that will be whilst you're driving i had um cleaning my rear window screen as one of mine in fact two of mine i got asked that twice in two different tests and also in my last test i got asked to demist the rear window screen so i think people were really worried about my rear window screen but anyway so that's what i did and then they will also ask you a tell me question which is usually before you set off where they will ask you to tell yeah they will ask you to tell them how to do something so how would you check the oil in your car how would you um check that there's enough tread on the tires for example that kind of thing and you would just tell them but if you've revised the questions you will know the answers trust me so i will leave a link to all of the questions down below in the description if you want to go and check them out there all the questions with answers as well obviously some of the questions do um are a bit more tailored to your car so how things work how you check certain things so the person's car it is you might need to ask them some of these questions and then just write the answer down or something but make sure you know them because um you know you don't want to be picking up unnecessary minors you definitely do not need an instructor to teach you those it is a complete waste of money for that um but yeah they are online also i would recommend to practice the show me questions whilst driving as well because i do find it a little bit um hard to like you know demiss the rear window screen whilst driving because i especially in your test because you don't want to do something wrong and you don't want to you know keep your eyes off the road but yeah practice whilst you're driving then once you feel comfortable you want to book your driving test so i um had a lot of availabilities for my driving test so i actually did them two three weeks after each other uh, i know a lot of places are booked up but where i did mine it wasn't really that booked up um but yeah i would recommend to book your driving test and then to just get as much practice in as possible maybe do some mock driving tests so get your parent or the person helping you to ask you questions or to um you know follow their direction that kind of thing make sure you're comfortable with the car make sure you know the area around your test center really well and that you have good practice around there because that is where you're going to be doing your tests you need to have good eyesight and that the car has you know it's you know it's completely fine to do the test you know you need to make sure it meets the regulations you need to be constantly checking your mirrors and focused all time when practicing don't make sure you've got both hands on the steering wheel as well but all of this information is on google um just if you've got any questions whatsoever just research it there's so much information out there online and there's videos on how to pass your test first time or um you know what the examiner's looking for that kind of thing so just other kind of final points before i end this video i feel like i've been talking for ages is don't worry if you fail and um, book it again you know it's not the end of the world there are such worse things happening when i failed i wasn't you know too distraught because i just knew that this is just it's just failing my driving test you know there's people being told awful news in the world or bad things happening that this really doesn't matter so when you have that perspective on you just think okay i'll book it again so i did and then i failed again um, but i then booked it again and i didn't lose confidence i just thought what happens happens in life for me i always say whatever happens will happen or whatever happens happens yeah what will be will be basically and just remember don't worry about the money element you have saved a lot of money by not having lessons so if you do fail don't think oh that's money you've saved not having lessons so don't worry about it and also when um, an advantage to learning in your own car is that you don't have to pay for the hire of the instructor's car on the day it's only 62 well i say it's only it's 62 pounds to do your driving test 
in your own car um but if you did it in an instructor's car it'll be a lot more than that so for me you know i had to pay 62 pounds times three and that was basically it because obviously i did three tests another thing to remember is mirrors 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 that is literally what they're looking for they are looking for mirrors so just mirrors okay mirrors don't pick up any bad habits from the person you're learning from either be calm and relaxed for your test and just think you will pass eventually if you don't pass today it's because it's not meant to be it's not your time to pass and just treat it as experience you know i treated my driving test as an experience because then i knew what was to come for my next driving test i knew what to practice on that kind of thing do not rush you don't want to rush because you'll end up making mistakes or you could put someone in danger because at the end of the day you don't want to rush learning to you know drive a vehicle that you could potentially kill someone in so i think it is best to take your time with it and make sure that you are completely confident with driving because you do you know you might be able to rush it so that you actually do pass your test but after you pass your test you want to be safe on the road you don't want to have just scraped through your test and then you have a crash after um, and potentially injure somebody you want to make sure that you are safe and finally good luck basically good luck for learning to drive for doing your driving test i'm sorry this video was really long but i wanted to cram in all the information possible all i'm gonna say is don't listen to people that tell you you need an instructor believe in yourself because you can do it the internet is your best friend and if you follow everything in this video you should be fine and yeah it will be good and like i said if you fail your first test and you get 50 minors or whatever then you will know okay maybe learning to do my test without an instructor is not for me then you'll know and then you can have an instructor but if you like me i got zero minors in my first test or even if you have like six or seven minors that's fine you have still shown a lot of confidence in your test so just bear that in mind but thank you for watching this video. I hope it was helpful to at least somebody. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below or you can always message me on Instagram, which is also linked in the description. Hopefully that link still works. But that is the end of today's video and good luck if you're doing a driving test. I believe that you can do it because um, I did it. And when I first started driving, I was so scared. I was stalling and stalling and stalling and stalling when I first learned to drive. Um, but yeah, you can do it and don't rush. So yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.